Sometimes vacuum cleaner filters are cleaned by blowing the dust out of them using an air compressor rather than rinsing them with water. This is done to try and bypass the one day drying time. Other than the need to own a compressor and set it up, blowing dust has to be done outside, is very messy, could be harmful to people sensitive to dust, and is polluting. Manufacturers instruct using water because it's far more effective at cleaning, meaning firstly, it prevents the filter clogging as quickly next time, and secondly, it removes and dissolves all the biological material which causes odours. Blowing a pre-motor filter may remove a lot of the surface dirt and keep it ticking over, but won't get rid of the embedded dirt locked firmly between the fibres or stuck on the fibre surface. It's also not possible to clean a fine HEPA filter by blowing because they work very differently. Rinsing is a very quick process that's at least as quick as using compressed air, and drying time can be sped up using a cool fan if necessary to ventilate or leaving near a warm radiator. Filters should never be put in the tumble dryer because that can damage them. The rest of this video provides more details why filters should always be rinsed using water. Air and dirt of a wide range of sizes comes into a vacuum cleaner, and most of it is separated out in the first stage using either old-fashioned bags or more modern cyclonic technology. Really fine dust can get through and filters are needed to capture it. Cleaners that don't have good first stage dirt separation let more of this fine dust through and are more reliant on a filter. This thus clogs up faster and needs more frequent rinsing to avoid getting blocked and causing suction loss, which means more maintenance hassle for the user. Filters are put before the motor because too much fine dust could cause it to age faster and fail. As such, they're called pre-motor filters. These filters don't capture everything, and in good cleaners, there's also a post-motor HEPA filter, which is designed to capture the remaining ultra-small particles. The air leaving a good vacuum cleaner is often cleaner than the ambient air you breathe. A pre-motor filter is a complex network of randomly woven fibres that acts like a net. Fine dust particles get stuck between the fibres as they pass through. Much fewer of the larger dust particles and the rest of the smaller ones pass through with the air. Eventually, many of the gaps between fibres get clogged with particles and this stops air passing through, meaning airflow drops off and the vacuum loses suction. The particles thus need removing to reset the filter and this should be done by rinsing. Incidentally, poorer manufacturers of vacuum cleaners expect the user to throw away clogged filters and buy new ones, which is expensive, wasteful and harmful to the environment. Manufacturers recommend rinsing filters with water. There are two main reasons for this. Firstly, water is a much denser, heavier fluid than air and does a much better job at dislodging far more of the trapped particles and microscopic scales. It can also help chemically unstick any that are bonded to the fibres. In contrast, while blowing very hard with compressed air will remove many of the particles, there will still be many lodged in there because a filter will still trap particles even if the air is moving through very fast. This means blowing with a compressor may not restore all the suction and the filter may clog more quickly next time. The second reason why filters should be rinsed is because water can help dissolve biological particles which can cause bad odours. This is much like why clothes are washed rather than being blown with a compressor. The first link in the description covers the origin of vacuum cleaner smells and how to stop them. The better the filtration technology at the first stage, the less a vacuum cleaner needs to rely on a filter. So which technologies filter dust at the first stage the best whilst maintaining full performance? Most vacuum cleaners are now bagless, but old fashioned bags are surprisingly still used. Both vacuum bags and filters clog via the same principle and so unavoidably lose some suction compared to when brand new. Some manufacturers cheat by increasing power consumption to compensate for suction losses by brute force, which is harmful to the environment and more expensive for the user. And this problem is covered in the video with the second link in the description. Poor cyclonic filtration in cheaper knockoff bagless cleaners isn't very efficient and lots of dust reaches the filter causing it to clog quickly. This means more frequent rinsing is required. The best cyclonic bagless technology was developed by Dyson and suction always stays as high as when brand new if used as instructed in the manual. Not as much dust reaches their filters and so they don't really clog. Rinsing is thus mainly to stop odours. 
The video with the third link in the description provides an overview of the performance advantages of Dyson cyclonic filtration technology over both any bagged cleaner and cheap knockoff bagless technology. The best vacuum cleaner filtration technology on the market is provided by Dyson's Kinetic Cyclones. The videos with the fourth and fifth links in the description provide an overview of how it works so well. It filters out more fine dust than a pre-motor filter and thus doesn't need one. So little dust is collected by the post-motor HEPA filter over its 10 year lifetime that it never needs to be rinsed and never loses suction, completely eliminating any filter cleaning requirements. A pre-motor filter simply nets particles that are larger than the gaps between fibres in the mesh network. The HEPA filter captures particles which are much smaller and works in a different way. They can't net particles because they're smaller than the smallest gaps between the fibres. So how do they work? At very small scales, the world behaves in a different way and you have to change the way you see things. The way HEPA filters work is generally described by classical colloid filtration theory. A colloid suspension is a fluid, i.e. a liquid or a gas, containing freely suspended small particles. These very small particles in air don't just drop down and fall out like large pieces of dust, but instead behave like raisins in jelly. Colloids will be destabilised under certain conditions, meaning the individual particles can be made to clump together or stick to something. Airflow in vacuum cleaners plays a big part in this, but also Brownian diffusion. Brownian motion is when small particles are bombarded by the even smaller particles in the fluid surrounding them, i.e. the air molecules in this case, and erratically bounce around. Coagulation occurs as particles collide with each other and the HEPA filter fibres, and flocculate, i.e. stick together and form bigger masses. This occurs via orthokinetic, i.e. fluid motion based, or perikinetic, i.e. the Brownian diffusion based, interactions. Other chemical species can be present in the colloid to cause destabilisation and enhance attachment efficiency. Mechanistically, what happens in a HEPA filter is that, firstly, particles are transported to a solid fluid interface, i.e. the filter fibre or a pre-existing trapped particle. Not all relatively large particles are captured by the pre-motor filter, and for these larger particles, fluid velocity gradients provide the energy to flocculate. They have relatively more inertia and typically impact or sediment at the interface. Smaller particles may still have enough inertia to make contact and graze the interface and stick, which is called interception. For the smallest particles, Brownian diffusion becomes dominant and they randomly walk in the flow before contacting the interface, which is known as diffusion. Secondly, on contact, the particle may attach to that interface. How these small particles attach again requires a different way of thinking about the world at these scales. In short, their stickiness is a consequence of chemical processes and requires the need to overcome contact energy barriers. Not all particles making contact adhere though, and thus filtration isn't 100% efficient. But for vacuum cleaner HEPA filters, the grade is such that 99.97% of particles greater than 300 nanometers are captured in this way. This is in general a very brief lay explanation of the physics of HEPA filtration, but it's actually far more complex than this, but it's beyond the scope of this video. In summary, you should always use water if you want to optimally clean a filter. It's not possible to blow a HEPA filter clean by definition of how it works. The filters will clog less if rinsed properly, and rinsing is the only way to remove bad odours the filter may capture. The best vacuum technology will rely on the filters much less to maintain full suction without any loss, and currently only Dyson vacuum cleaners achieve this. Filter drying time can be reduced by ventilating, such as using an unheated fan or leaving near a gentle radiator.